I'd like to share with you the visit I did to the exhibition about Raphael at the National Gallery in London. If you do enjoy to watch my videos about restoration of old paintings, I believe you not only enjoy to watch the restoration process, but you also love art in general, so for you all art lovers, this is a small tribute that a humble viewer like me can pay to such a great master, is to share his art. All the credits to the magnificent curators that made everything to present us with such a magnificent exhibition. Thank you. March, early April of 1483, Raphael is born in Urbino. In August 1494, Raphael becomes orphan at his father's death. In 1503, Raphael is resident in Perugia, Umbria. In 1504, Raphael's main work centers in Florence and Perugia, and he works mainly for private clients. In 1508, Raphael arrives in Rome to paint for the Pope Julius II. Here is when he starts the decoration of the papal apartments. In 1513, Pope Julius II dies and is succeeded by Leo X, which is a great patron of the arts. Raphael continues his works on the stanza and his workshop dominates the art scene in Rome. In 1514, Leo X appoints Raphael as chief architect of the new St. Peter's Basilica. One year later, Raphael starts designing a series of tapestries for Leo X for the walls of the Sistine Chapel. In August, Raphael is appointed surveyor of the ancient Rome excavations. In April 1520, Raphael dies in Rome after a short illness. Raphael's already considerable gifts are very clear here in this autoportrait. He did when he was about 15 or 16 years of age. He has already great control in the way he uses the black shulk uh, to reveal the light in his eyes and the shadow falling in his cheeks and lips. In contrast with the fine lines that suggest his cap, his hair and color. Saint Sebastian was shot by heroes by his Roman persecutors, but he survived. After that, he was celebrated as a healer and would be subject of praying, especially in the periods of play. This work was painted for private devotion and Raphael chooses to paint the saint as a beautiful and fully clothed youth. We can note the details in the collar of the shirt that remind us of music notes. Here St. Sebastian holds a hero as a reminder of his suffering. This inspired the painting with a contemplative and serene mood. This is a study for the young Apostle James. It is a preparatory draw for an altarpiece painted for the Church of San Francisco in Perugia. Here Raphael depicts the saint looking up in a contemplative wonder. He looks at the scene of the Virgin Coronation in heaven.
To plan his works, Raphael used drawings that he would make at any stage. This one in particular is his last thought prior to painting it. Both are in scale and in every detail. It corresponds exactly with the final work Raphael painted. Originally, this panel was the central one of a narrative of three panels that formed the base, also called predella, of an altarpiece. We can see in it Jesus in his way to be crucified. Jesus is surrounded by Roman soldiers and with Simon of Kiran taking over his burden. This panel was painted for the church of San Domenico in Città di Castella. With this work, Raphael shows his ability to communicate the essence of a subject even across distance. Christ is painted in silhouette against a clear sky in which angels over to collect his blood in calluses. Below symmetrical painted are the kneeling Saint Jerome and Mary Magdalene, flanked by Virgin Mary and Saint John. They are placed against a simple landscape. We can notice the influence of the painter Perugino in the way Raphael paints with enlightened and clear colors. The elegance of the line and the idealized oval-faced figures. St. George's triumph over the dragon is the most celebrated episode from his legend. Raphael paints this combat in a landscape that reminds the green and rocky countryside that surrounds his native Urbino. The way Raphael paints the horse reveals already his interest in ancient sculpture. In the landscape, darkened by fire and a pall of smoke, the archangel Saint Michael triumphs over the fallen angel Lucifer, that takes here the form of a monster. In the background, Raphael paints with high detail hellish scenes, which represent different episodes of the Dante's Inferno. In this panel, Raphael paints a tree, set against an atmospheric landscape. We can see this tree divide the composition in two. At the center, at the base, a young knight sleeps. He is flanked by two female figures. One is holding a book and a sword. 
she embodies virtue. The other one more lavishly dressed woman offering a flower might personify vice. Raphael, in contrast with several other artists, does not make a moral distinction. Maybe he is suggesting they are two complementary aspects of life. This study is devoted for Raphael's first major commission, an altarpiece for the church of St. Augustine in Città di Castello Umbria. The man at the center models the figure of God, the Father. Raphael was throughout his career very careful with all details in an important commission. These two small-scale sketches in black chalk show different orientations and scales of a head of an angel and three close-ups of hands. Raphael would draw these from a posed model actually holding the crown, the cross and the book, all represented in the final altarpiece. From 1504 to 1508, Raphael oriented himself towards Florence, the artistic and financial center of central Italy. In this large-scale attempt at a tondo, which is a round type of painting much associated with Florence, Raphael adapts a device normally used in rectangular format portraits of seating the virgin and child before a parapet that divides them from the landscape beyond. The infant John Baptist, principal patron saint of Florence on the left and the identified child saint on the right are cut off by the picture's circular edge. The artist here engages directly with the viewer, his dark brown eyes looking straight out of the picture. This painting was first recorded in Medici inventories in Florence in 1631, and it was described as Un ritratto di Raffaello di Sumano a portrait of Raphael by his own end. Raphael is on his early twenties and portrays his head and shoulders and the shadow projected against the wall on the right. It relies on a strong contrast that serves to focus attention on the sitter's features. The drawing 
is a fully developed study. At this stage, the intention was to show the dead Christ in his mother's lap at the center of a group of several attendant figures. Later, Raphael transformed the invention into a dramatic and radically new depiction of Christ's limp body being carried to his tomb. This unidentified woman, referred as La Muta, the silent one, was unable to speak. Nevertheless, her portrait exudes a powerful sense of quiet reserve. She is against a dark background of a type pioneered by Leonardo and animated by a sense of an inner mental life. Her pale brown eyes hold our gaze, while her hands rest on the front edge of the picture. Raphael was generous towards other artists. Throughout his career, he would provide designs for several of them to work from. He was friend of Domenico Alfani in Perugia and sent him this highly finished drawing. Alfani used it for an altarpiece in the church of Santi Simon and Giuda in Perugia. This is the only surviving panel from the predella base of Raphael's altarpiece painted for the Ancide family in Perugia. Here, John the Baptist foretells the coming of Christ. The characterful figures in the crowd may have been based on prints by Albert Dürer, although their elegantly interwined arrangement, culminating in a pair of playful toddlers, is a typical personal touch. When the altarpiece was complete, the Baptist would have been pointing directly up at the identically dressed, full-scale, counterpart in the main panel. Special emphasis will be given to the Madonnas painted by Raphael. He made amazing beautiful pieces of art. But that stays for the next episode of this series dedicated to Raphael. So make sure you don't miss it. You can now watch the restoration process of this painting inspired in one of the most emblematic works of Raphael or this other restoration project. Thanks for watching. I meet you on the next video.